uh, we looked forward to hearing from you on many occasions we would ask you questions and now again we're going to ask you to give us some advice well I'm not very sure what audience I'm we've got here this is the world at large I I would say take a look at yourselves are you leading a good life? Do you feel that you're a good life? Do you, do you feel that you're committing sin? It's not sins that have been written down or told to you, but something in your heart, in your body. Are you doing something you think is wrong? Do you not think you could possibly do things better? Maybe, maybe not be so greedy, maybe help other people. Maybe pay more attention to God, Allah. If you do that, Realize that he's there looking after you and not only that he's there to care for you when you leave depart from this life It's very important and all the rules are laid down Think about him Come to him and the, and the, and the best if when you when you decide that it's time something will come go and see Go to your local Masjid or mosque or, or Islamic center find someone that you can talk to in your, if your own cultural background is better uh, to find someone like yourself that, that they can help you uh, uh, answer the many questions you have. And uh, I, 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 I tell you that you will feel a lot better, feel a great deal better when you've accomplished this and come to terms with uh, Allah and certainly with all the people in the last years of your life. And if you're a young person, it goes for that as well. But and if you're younger, the more advice you need from people much more experience than I am. No experience. I only became a Muslim since the, in the 10th of June this year. So I'm unable to to instruct you all that well. But somebody like our brother here, Yusuf, will be able to guide you in the right direction. And I advise you all to do this before it's too late. Because people often say to me, why have you become a Muslim? Now, you know, you could spend about an hour giving an answer, but I, I give a very a rather frivolous answer, I say, I want to be on the side of the angels when Allah decides to pull the final curtain down in this place. Now you think about that. I advise you to get on the side of the angels and don't leave it too late. Very good advice. Very, very good advice. And for me, I, I felt that it was personal to me as well. Thank you so much, James, for sharing the Hajj with us and sharing your life with us. And especially thank you for taking the time to be with us and, and give us this good advice. We love you so much. And you're, you're our brother in Islam, and we look to you like, like our father. We love you so much. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's our program for the Dean Show for this week. Eddie will be back with you next week. And until then, we ask that the words that our brother James shared with us today will become a part of our lives, influencing us properly, correctly, that we can also have this great relationship with our Lord, to be close to Allah, and also the teachings of our Prophet Muhammad when he told us that our relationship with Allah should be reflected in our relationship with the people. And whoever doesn't thank the people doesn't thank Allah. So we thank our brother James and all the brothers that helped us to have our hajj. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, for giving us the tawfiq, the success, in having our hajj and having this program with you. Until next time, for the Dean Show, I'm Yusuf Estes. Salam alaikum, which means peace be unto you. And there you have it, another person sharing their wonderful story with us, James, 85 years old. And I'd like to thank Sheikh Yusuf Estes for helping us out with this interview. I hope this story that James got to share with you is something that will have an impact in your life for those people who are still seeking the truth, wanting to know the truth after hearing his story and watching some of our other shows that you acknowledge and you're ready to acknowledge that, you know what, you're smart enough to know that there is a creator behind all of this, that this universe and everything in it did not just come by chance, that there is an orchestrator, there is one who is sustaining and maintaining it, and he is the most wise. He did not just create this all in mere play and foolishness, that I will have to go back to the giver of life, 
the one who has made me, and I'm going to have to answer for everything that I've done in this world, especially what I believed in my heart, and that the signs that he gives to an individual and to the nations, did I accept his signs? And this is one of them. Know that you are intelligent enough, and it's in your very nature when the truth comes to you, that it's simple to understand. It's nothing complicated. It's a way of life that all the messengers of God brought. They all taught the same way of life, submission and surrender to the one God. He is the most merciful. He is the most gracious. He is the king. He is the only holy one. He is the peace. He is the giver of safety. He is the mighty. He is the powerful, the majestic. He is the only true creator. He is the maker of shapes, the most forgiving, the sustainer, the all-knowing, the all-hearing, the most high. He is the protector. He is the most wise, the most loving. He is the giver of life and the giver of death. He is truly the self-existing. He's truly independent on, of all. And we are all dependent on Him. Try not taking the air in that He's given you. See if you're truly independent, which you are not. He is the only one truly independent and He is all powerful. He is ever living, the all rich. This is the one true God. In Arabic, we say Allah. In Aramaic, the language that Jesus, this mighty messenger spoke, he would say Allah. In Hebrew, Allah. So it doesn't take person with many brain cells to figure out that the English language, Moses, Jesus, Abraham, they never spoke any of this. They didn't speak English, they never said God. So when you put the pieces of the puzzle together, Allah, 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 this is the God. And we just gave you some of his attributes so you know that this is the one that I want to worship. This is the one that I want to turn to who I want to guide me. He is the one, the self-sufficient master who begets not nor was he begotten, to whom there is no co-equal or comparable, who has no wife, no child, no siblings, this is the one God. He loves you, He wants to guide you, and He will forgive all sins. But you got to turn to Him and you got to want it. We talked about some of these other things early in the show, that the lights will come on, the party will be over, this life will end, you'll be accountable for your sins. And you know, we got a lot of them. We're coming to a close. All I want to say is that we care for our brothers in humanity and we want everybody to be in paradise and paradise is eternal. Why barter something temporary, which is this life, for something eternal? Why would you risk paradise for something and a pleasure that's always in the past tense? I was here, I went there. It will all end. It will all be a past tense. In paradise, it just keeps getting better and better. And all you gotta do is, one, ask for the guidance, and when it comes to you, Submit to this one God and strive to be the best human being you can be doing what this creator wants you to do Doing it on his terms not your terms That's all we have for today. I hope that you got to benefit Continue tuning in every week to the Dean show and until next time Assalamu alaikum Which means peace be unto you La ilaha. La ilaha, la ilaha, la ilaha, la ilaha.